Hi guys, Kim here with Art Classes for Kids and Lily's here. We are going to do a chalk pastel portrait uh, lesson today. And if it's your very first time, uh, welcome to Art Classes for Kids channel. Um, we're going to be doing this style of portrait inspired by the Italian artist Amadeo Modigliani. And this is our kind of version. This is an image of his original painting done in the early 1900s. Um, and this is the woman in the hat. And I believe it was his wife that he did the portrait of. Should we tell them what they're gonna need? Sure. It's pretty simple today. Yeah. Go ahead, Lily. So all you need is some plain black construction paper, some masking tape, but you don't have to have masking tape. We just put it around our edges like this so that we get a nice clean edge. You don't have to do this. And then we have some chalk pastels, but you don't have to have this many. Just have a nice rainbow assortment of them. Yeah, you might have eight or 10 and yeah. that's plenty. You know, you'll have every color you need. So we're just working with what we have. Yeah, and it, if it is your first time, um, you know, welcome. If, it, if you've been watching us for the last two weeks that we've been posting daily videos, uh, we are now posting them ahead of time or videotaping them ahead of time and then posting them daily. And we usually get it posted by the early afternoon. A few weeks before that, we were doing live streaming, which was kind of fun and crazy at the same time, just running and getting ready to push that button and get online. But now we're doing them a little earlier so that you can pause whenever you want. And also so the people on the East Coast can get them a little bit earlier. And uh, hmm, what else can we say? So our channel, all our lessons are free. Um, but if you'd like to help support us, we have two different ways. One is that you can uh, make a small donation on our Ko-fi link. That you'll find in the descriptions and also at the end of the video. Or if you need any art supplies for any of our projects, we have compiled a list of the things we use the most and we put them on our website. And we, they are linked to amazon.com. And if you order any art supplies and you would normally go to Amazon, well, go to our website first because we've narrowed down the supplies you need. And we have... Just uh, some of the basic supplies we regularly use in all of our art videos. Yes, and since we're an Amazon affiliate, if you purchase them through us, you still get them delivered by Amazon, but they will contribute a little portion towards our video endeavors and making these videos and keeping them free. For you. Yes, so support that if you can. Yes, and also don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notifications button so you know when all of yeah. our other art videos are coming out. Yeah. So let's get started. Yeah, so to get started, the first thing I'm gonna have you do is hopefully you've gathered up your supplies then you're gonna take paper. If you wanna see how to add the tape edge to the paper, I'm gonna show you. you. You take this tape and you pull out a piece and you line it up. You start in the corner, you line it up with the edge of your paper, you rub it down, and then you just rip it to match the edge of the paper. You don't wanna wrap it around because it's really hard to get off at the end and sometimes it rips the paper. Yeah, you don't to get wanna off. wrap it around if you have any extra uh, yeah, so for example, edge. if I just ripped it like this and I had that much left and wrapped it around, it's super hard to get off and trying to get it off sometimes rips the paper. So we and just we don't want that. tear it, keep it like that. So um, so go ahead and, and do this to your paper if you happen to have some tape. This is low tack tape. You could use regular masking tape, it's just a little stickier. Or you could use scotch tape, but then that's stickier too and harder to get off but it could create the same illusion. So now that's how we get it done. So Lily is going to be doing hers tabletop view. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put mine on a board so that I can hold it up while we're doing it so you can see it really good. So now Amadeo Modigliani, the thing he was really known for was the real elongated faces on the portraits he did. So they were exaggerated, and the next was exaggeratedly long. 
So people had a really long neck compared to an, an average human being and a really narrow and long face. So we're gonna do one, we're gonna do the, the woman in the hat, but I'm gonna give you options all the way through as far as details you wanna add or also if, you know, what colors you wanna use because that's gonna be making it your own. So let's get started. So we're going to sketch out the entire composition before we go and start filling in things. So since we're doing that, I'm gonna pick like a tan or um, a light brown pastel to just sketch that out. So go ahead and pick one of these kind of brown shades. You like that tan? Okay. And here we go. So right in the middle of this this entire paper, I want you to just make a tiny dot. That's gonna mark where the halfway point is. And in our composition, about halfway down is her chin. So where her chin is, I want you to take like three fingers and make a U shape around three fingers like that. Well, that's kind of bumpy, but we can smooth it out. Because the great thing about pastels is that you can kind of rub them out if you don't like them. So I'm gonna get a U shape like that. So if you want to reach uh, three fingers, you can just flip around your paper and then do your middle finger touching the dot and then just work around it. And you can just barely make a mark on your paper. So you don't have to push hard on this because you'll be able to see it later. Now what you're gonna do is make sure it's really long and narrow. If it's not narrow enough, you can go a little higher with yours, Lily. Oh, actually, you can go a little lower with yours, I think, to make it longer. So I'm gonna have her adjust hers just a little, and then she just wipes off the first chalk line she made. So that's what's great about chalk pastels is that you can kind of erase some of the things. And as... chalk covers chalk. So another color will end up covering her yeah. guideline that she did before. Now the brim of the hat, if I go to the middle of the paper, this distance is close to this distance, except the face is a little longer than there. So what I do is I take my fingers and I use those as like calipers, like calibrating, and I think, oh, what's halfway between this space? And it's about here. So the head is higher than half the distance. So I'm gonna take my lines a little bit higher then halfway between middle to top. So if this was the bottom of the chin, and that's the middle of my paper, and this is the top of my paper. What's this gonna be? That's gonna be, well, that, that was the point, watch, watch. That's the middle, that's the top, halfway through is here, and I made a guideline here. So is now, this gonna I, be the eyes or what? Well, those, so be yeah, the those, eyes are? those are gonna be close to where the eyes are gonna be. Okay, cool. Cool. but I wanna get the hat going, and we'll get to the details of the face later. Okay, so a little higher than that mark I just made, so you wanna go up a little higher than that, is where you're going to make a slightly, it's flat, but with a slight rainbow curve. So a little higher than that, you're gonna make your, your uh, brim of your hat. Just go like that. Oh, and also with your chalk dust, mm -hmm. you do not wanna blow it. You wanna tap it on the surface of your workspace. Yes. And it's kind of messy, but you don't need to wash your hands till the end because you're just gonna keep getting dirty till, you know, the hands are gonna keep getting dusty until we're completely done. So now what we're gonna do is, sometimes I take my finger and I get it a little dirty and I can make a guideline with my finger because what I wanna do is go from the brim all the way around into her chin. But see, I'm gonna go all the way to the side of the paper before I go to the chin. I'm not gonna go like this, am I? No. Are you paying attention, Lily? Yeah, You're doing I'm your just, thing. No, I'm just adjusting. And that might be happening to you at home as well. I'm just adjusting. So we're not gonna go around like this because we want this brim huge. Okay, that was the style then. So we're gonna go all the way to the side and come back and then this one's gonna disappear. Right here, yeah. uh, the brim of the hat meets up where the side of the hair ends. Yeah, but we'll just think of going from the brim, making a curve and coming back and touching the chin. So do you do that with your chalk? Yeah, you can first guideline it with a dirty finger and then once you feel like that's working, 
you lightly can go here, like that. All the way to the tape, all the way to the tape. There you go, nice. Okay, now on the other side, it's gonna be a little different. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna draw the neck first. So the neck is gonna be two lines that are long. Just like that. Maybe a little longer. Like that. Like half the, the face is this big. If I figured the face is, half the face is this, the neck's about the length of half the face's length. So ch ch that's how we measure. I measure, I, I like lock my hands in. And then I keep them together and go, oh, it needs to be that far. That's how I measure. Because everybody's is a different size. You guys might not be using the exact same size paper as me. So if you aren't, then it would be a different amount of inches away, right? Or okay, that's looking good. Now, right after that, I'm gonna go downhill and downhill and out for her shoulders. She has these really narrow shoulders. So now we've done the shoulders like this. And now the shoulder, this is gonna continue and go down just before the corner here, and just before the corner here. So I've made myself two little smudgy guidelines. Now I'm gonna aim to that. Just like that. You got it. I bet you guys got this in it. Look, it, it's easier than it might look. Okay, now we're gonna do her collar. It's gonna make a big U shape right here. And it doesn't touch the bottom of the paper. Just maybe to here. So I make a little guide here and go, that's as low as my collar's gonna go. And I'm gonna start here at the shoulders and do that. Maybe you don't even need that little guideline. Nice. You guys are following along great. Okay, so now we're gonna get to her hair. So her hair on this side, it kind of splits really close to the top of the brim. And on the, on the left side, watch what I do on the left side. You can rub that little guideline out too if you want. Oh, what was it for? It's not, it, it was just to find the distance. Okay, so I'll get rid of that too. Okay, so now here's how we do the hair. On the left side, watch what I do on the left. You ready, Lil? <laughs> get your uh, pastel ready. You're gonna go straight down like this and then right before her chin, you're gonna make a little bubble out or a bump out. Cool, cool. So her hair goes like that. That's only on the left side. It does something different on the right. It's not symmetrical, so hang in there and wait. So close, and then bump it out far. Yeah, just that. Okay. So, and if you want a different hairstyle for your girl, you go for it. I'll show you how this one was done, but if you want to have her have long hair, then give her long hair. If you want her to have like a flip hairdo where it flips out, do that. You know, you, you can be your own hairstylist, okay? So on this side, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stay close to her head until we get close to her shoulder and we're gonna go bump out, but instead of going to the chin, we're gonna go to her shoulder, like that. Just like that. Great! So now that we know where her hair ends here, just above where her hair ends at her shoulder, just above it, make a little mark like that. Just above it, right like that. Now that is going to be the other side of the brim of her hat because it's tilted. It's lower on the right and higher on the left. So watch this. I'm gonna go like this all the way, almost out to the tape, up to the brim. First I'm making my curve, and this could look like it's coming there if I just go like, now what I'm gonna do is adjust this curve. Now I'm gonna make this one look like it continued back here, like that. You see? Now make this look like, ooh, that has to angle down in order to make it connect. See? Take a peek, Lils. It's all right. So any adjusting you have to do, don't worry, we all adjust. You know, no one gets this stuff 
matching up perfectly on their first try. So what you're gonna do is just make sure this broom looks like it connects behind and then you're just gonna go like, like that. And I'm gonna make this hair come down a little lower. So there, oh, yours is super good, Lily. Yeah. Looks great. Now we're gonna make another line to show the thickness of the broom. So that means right above the brim edge, you're gonna have another line that goes parallel to this, except it's gonna thin out as it hits the curve like this. So it's right there, and then I go. And then oh, it's like to... the outline. Yeah, it reminds me of when we did the plate on the Wayne Tebow cupcake. Oh yeah, if you haven't seen that video, you should go and see that. So you're gonna start up with the line not touching the line next to it, and it's gonna get closer, closer, closer until it hits the curve, and then it's gonna touch and blend in with that line. That looks excellent. Now the top part of her hat has to fit her head in it, okay? So the top part of her hat has to fit her head. So it can't be narrower than her head, right? It has to stick out a little farther than her head. So here's her head, and it's gotta stick out farther, so I might go like that, and right on the outside of her hair like that, and then I know this goes up and across. So, or all the way up to the top of the paper. Because just like in Modigliani's original painting, it goes all the way to the top edge of his canvas. Because his was a painting. We're just doing a version with chalk pastels. Great. See how mine looks? Because I've been looking at it upside down. Okay, I'm gonna move this out a little more. Move this, oh, boom. Okay, so that's how mine looks. So all we have left is the hand and the facial features, okay? So hopefully you're, you're feeling like, wow, this is easier than I thought it would be, it, especially when I saw the examples. What do you think, Lily? You're doing great, okay? So next, what do you wanna do next? The hand or do you wanna do the face? I wanna do the face. Let's do the face, okay. The face is pretty simple. First of all, you're gonna, as close as you can, or pretty close to the hair, like where the bangs go back, you're gonna have two horizontal lines, and those are the eyebrows. Those are the eyebrows. So go ahead and make two lines across, as close to the hair as you can. Okay, then, in between that, you're gonna have two lines that come together, and do these light, that are really close together, and they go, uh, halfway down or maybe even a little bit more. And this is the top of your nose. Yes, this is the, yeah, the bridge of your nose, so. You're kind of gonna do it like, um, uh, where that, where that, where that, that um, was? guideline was. Yes, yeah. that's what it was for. That's what oh, it was Oh, okay. For. Go ahead. Now remember, he exaggerated everything, so go longer than you think. Yeah, that's good. Now at the tip of the nose, Give me a little, almost like a rounded V. Like that, kind of. Okay, and then on the left side, give me not as low as the tip of the center, a little higher, just a teeny tiny curve, like a C curve. But make sure that that isn't as low as the point of the center of the nose. Because once you get that, you're fine. On the other side, you can do that too. It's really tiny. These things are very tiny. Otherwise, she's gonna appear to have a, like a really, you know, big nose. Okay, you got that. Now, about two eye spaces below the eyebrows, because these eyes are little, you're gonna put two tiny eyes. Like that. They look like teeny tiny lemons. Not circles, lemons. They gotta be pointed in the corners. Yeah, you're doing all right. Okay, and next, the lips. So you ready for the lips? The lips are easy. So halfway between the nose and the chin, just give me a little dash line. And above the dash line, I make the shape of an M that curls out, or what I would call like the, the flying bird shape. Like that. Let me zoom that in. And then below that first mark, that horizontal line, you're gonna have a little smile curve like that. 
and it's a very tiny lips. Okay, we have mastered the face. That's all there is to it. I mean, when we get to the shading, that's what's gonna give it that Modigliani look. Okay, so next we've got the hand. Now, the hand is the hardest part. So if you'd like to skip the hand, then skip the hand. But if you are ready for a challenge, let's take it on, okay? I'm not gonna do the hand because I'm gonna make it kind of my own. Okay. But you can do the hand if you want. Okay, so let me show the viewers at home how to do the hand. So her hand position is like this. You know, she's like, she's in contemplation. She's thinking, right? So she has two fingers up and these fingers you see curled and you really don't see her thumb. So we're gonna take her hand right here. I have my neck pretty skinny. I'm gonna go to the right side of, of, of the neck and make that be one finger by going all the way from here down and then coming in a little like that. So I'm gonna follow this line and go in a little like that. Then I'm gonna curve this and really close together, no wider than a pastel stick. I'm gonna come here, one, and then I'm gonna do another one right behind it, it's a little shorter, too. Like that. And then, let me see the, let me see the famous painting. Oh, right there. And then I've got, ooh, let's do this different. Let's do, hold on one sec. Let's have this one be in front. This one's gonna be in front. Like that, and then this one's behind it. So hopefully you can see that. Let me get a pencil eraser. So this shows up even better from far away. I'm gonna take a little pencil eraser and erase some of the chalk. Okay, so you see we have one finger in front and one finger behind and they're touching the chin. And after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the rainbow curve like this, a little rainbow curve, and then we're gonna do another one, and then we're gonna do one more. And then these two are fingers that are curved like this. So these, you can just bend it in, bend it in, and then this, and then underneath, I'm gonna go like this and come down for the hand. Okay, if I want to show that a little clearer, I'll just erase that so you can see. Now, I kind of think I need a little more space between the fingers and the palm, of, the side view of the palm of the hand. So I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to redo that a little wider. She doesn't really have a thumb. Well, it's hidden behind because it's like this. It's like two fingers up this, and it's hidden behind it. You can't see it. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go here and we're gonna go a little more across. Then I can make that a little wider. A little bit like that. Okay? If you wanna try to show the thumb, the thumb would be kind of back, hidden back in here. Like Two are open, this one's kind of going up. I'm gonna skip that, because I'm gonna make it more like the Modigliani paint. Okay, so we have all the parts, and now it's time to color. We're gonna do the toughest parts first, okay? We're gonna do the skin. The skin, I need you to pick a tan color and a yellow. This one's pretty. You need a bright yellow, and you need an orangey tan, okay? No, it's, they have to be really different. See how this is, see how this is yellow with orangey shades in it? So I'm gonna take the yellow. Is it this an orange tab? Yeah. So, but you can go with a full orange. Okay, I'm gonna take, woo! Almost lost it, but saved. They look pretty different. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna is I'm gonna take, color. I want a lot of contrast. So I'm gonna color my whole face yellow, but I don't wanna build up the chalk dust really thick. So watch what I do. So I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna, I can even go over, partially over my lines. 
but I don't want to lose my features. When I get a, a squared off piece of chalk, I, I look for like a pointy corner if I need a skinny area to, to you know be using to draw with it. Then I'm gonna go around slowly. See how I'm doing that, Lils? Oh, you don't have to do all that. That's gonna get covered with chalk. I just wanted to show you in that narrow area, it was hard for me to smear out the chalk. So I start out like this. I want to be able to see the features. So do not, hopefully, do not bury those guidelines of the composition that you made. Because we need those to know where everything is. To know where the mouth is. Okay, don't fill in the eyes. Keep those open and the lips too. So once you get like this, then what you're gonna do is take your finger and move it around a little. Maybe getting rid of all the little black space in between your coloring lines. And after you've done that, you're going to do the neck yellow as well. And you want to try and stay with the shape of the face and the neck when drawing your uh Yeah. If you're getting a lot of chalk dust, that's your first clue that you're pressing really hard. You want to barely touch the paper. Unless you yeah. want a bright color. Yeah, you can still get a bright color because once you blend it, you take some of the brightness out. Okay, so we've got the face covered in yellow, we've got the neck and the top of the shoulders covered in yellow, and now uh, we want to do the hand. And then we'll have all our skin parts with the base color of yellow. So I'm going back in here. Trying to make sure I can still find those lines. Okay, so I do have a little bit of chalk dust. I'm gonna tap that out. Now, if, if you get chalk, here's a few tips. If you get chalk, it, it's better to tap it down because you don't want it to oh, get I blown. Told that already. Oh, and dust in your eye. The other thing is if you accidentally drop a pastel on the floor, the smartest thing to do is pick it up just after it dropped. Because if you forget about it, chances are somebody will step on it and it will just smash into powder. And then if the powder gets stepped on, wherever they go, it leaves a powder trail. And it might be red or some intense color that's gonna get all over a rug in your house or something. So just be careful that if you do drop them, you pick them right up. Okay, Lily, you're about there. And I know you can jam on the neck really quick. So that we can move on to the next thing. So we'll just wait for Lily to get her neck done and then I'll show you how we're going to blend in the oranges or the dark browns. Okay, so now we're ready. Now you're gonna take your darker color, which could be this brownish version, and on the right side, you're going to shade in a little bit of orange because the right side's gonna be our shadow side and the left side's gonna be our highlight side. So you're adding it really lightly on top of the yellow. And then don't rub it so hard that you rub it out. Watch how I do this light. I just go like this. I just tap it like this. You see? Okay, and then once you've done that, on the other side, near the eye, give it a little bit of shading around there. So on the left eye, give it a little more shading. Just like this. Okay, now, on the left side of the hand, go ahead and shade it a little. So since you didn't have a hand, you get to skip this part. But if you want, you can, on the left side of your shoulder, on the shade side, add a little bit of the darker orange. That looks great. Do you okay. do any on the neck? Um, on the neck, yeah, you, on the left side of the neck. Because mine you can't see because I've got my hands in front of that left side. And at the bottom of each finger, if you've done the hands. And then we're gonna look for a dark brown. A really dark brown. So next, uh, we can share this dark brown. 
So now we're gonna do a detail. So if you're doing a detail, look for a corner on your pastel that you can make a skinny mark with. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go under the chin like this, make a darker mark. And then we're going to go on the right side of the nose and, do, and just go down it and around it like that. And now the eyebrows can be darker, but they're thin lines. Okay, and let's see. Oh, I think we look pretty good. Um, huh, there isn't that much more. A little bit under the, if you did the hands, add a little bit of brown under each finger and in between the two fingers. Then I think you're good, but you can outline the opening of the eye with the brown. And then I want you to pick a light and colorful color, like light blue or light green for the inside of the eyes. So I'm gonna pick this light blue right here. And I'm gonna go in and give her a little light blue. Like that. I'm gonna do this light green. Light green, okay. And then I'm going to add a little bit of shading, a little bit of dark green to it, to the top edge of it. It's so tiny. Let me zoom this in. Check out those eyes. Okay. Now, it gets easier from here. So now, um, I want you to pick out what color is going to be the area behind where she's sitting. She might be sitting on a sofa or something. So I'm going to pick, oh, I'm gonna pick dark green like they have right there. And what I'm gonna do is right about where her shoulders are, I'm gonna go across and across. And then this is gonna be the, the color behind her that she, wherever she's sitting, it looks like she's sitting on a sofa. I'm gonna do the same thing, but you, a different color. Different color, okay. So pick that. Like where her shoulders are? Maybe. Yeah, right about where her shoulders uh, meet her collar. Gotcha. And that you can leave it really bright like this and not do anything to it or you can blend it in. It's up to you. I'm gonna keep mine super bright. I'm not even gonna blend this one area. Okay, so now all the rest of it, I want you to pick out the color of your choice. So, you can decide what color hair do you want her to have. That's up to you. Let's do her hair next. I'm gonna go with black hair. So I'm going over my guideline. So I had that guideline to start that was that orange color, and I'm gonna actually go over that and do her hair like this. So pick a color of hair. It can be any color you like, even if it's a, a special dyed color. You know that isn't normal, like. I'm blue. gonna I'm gonna do a blonde type color. Okay. So. So you have like a beige color, like one of those. I'm two. gonna do the same color as my outlines. Okay. Oh my gosh, what do we know about Modigliani now that we're just hanging out and coloring? Okay, so he was born in Italy. He went to school in Italy. He came from a wealthy family. But then when he was a teen, he uh, moved away to study in Paris. And then he, um, he also had an illness, which was tuberculosis, I think they said. And he didn't live that long. He only lived to be 36 years old. But he was doing art about 120 years ago. 100 to 120 years ago. And he was a contemporary of, which means a friend of, and doing art at the same time as, uh, famous artists like Pablo Picasso, uh, Diego Rivera, and the other Cubist artist that was famous, but not as famous as Picasso, is Juan Gris. And, um, you know, he, he didn't sell a lot of art when he was alive. He didn't. He mostly, um, 
he, he mostly became famous later because his style was so different with these long faces and later no one really ever did that he had no one else ever did art like that oh, I so to do this little oh you need the bangs in the front yes yeah. don't forget those bangs now after that let's pick a color for the hat now here it's a yellow brim with a black top you can have a two-tone hat with two different colors. Yeah, it's just a blue. It's just a blue hat, but uh, the top's a little hat darker. With a blue rim. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go pink. I'm going dark pink, light pink hat. So I'm picking this and this. Okay. So my very top part, I'm gonna go dark pink. This really bright dark pink. This one's creating a lot of dust. Now I noticed that mine, my hair kind of looks like it's swooping towards It does. Me. It's like she's like swooped to the back. Yeah. Swoop. Okay. So you do uh, that sometimes. Okay. So we've got this. I'm going to blend this one a little because it's kind of crazy. I'm going to do my hat and my brim of uh, my hat the same color, but maybe slightly like lighter. Now make sure you go over those guidelines. So it's not like an outlined hat. Yeah, there you go, Lily, you got it. So then I'm gonna go with my lighter pink, but I'm gonna go really bright on the, on the edge of my brim. Like this. Going over those orange lines that I started with, because I don't want those to show so much. So, so now I'll, I'm doing the brim of my hat a different color, but a bit darker. So have that bright outline like that. Ooh. Then I'm gonna go over this orange with this pink too, because I don't want that color showing so much anymore. You know what? I'm gonna mix this pinkish magenta color with the red that I had, because I mixed it together and kind of made it dark red. Oh, okay. So then in my areas, the underneath part of the brim, I'm gonna go lighter. I'm gonna just rub it really light. Like this, so it looks different from the rest. Just make sure I get chalk in all those areas. Once I get the chalk in all the areas, I'm gonna take my finger, blend it in, like this. So now I have three different values of pink on my brim. I've got, I've got the top part that's the really bright pink. I've got the light pink that's really saturated or you know, uh, you know, pressed down a lot, and then I have this more translucent light pink here. Oh, I just keep getting black in my, in my hair. So now I think I like my hat now. Whenever I'm working on it, I try to take a look at it from different distances because sometimes I'm so close, I can't even really, you know, decide if I like what I'm looking at or if I want to adjust anything. So rather than just being right in it the whole time, sometimes I'll, I'll set it here and I'll look at it, but then I'll set it from that far away and look at it again too. So now I see it and it looks a little like my brim isn't matching that. So I'm going to adjust that. So what I'm going to do to adjust that is I'm going to keep going to here and I'm bringing this down a little more. Now remember, you don't have to make it look exactly like the original uh, image, but you want to make it look like a nice work of art, right? So if you want to adjust something to make it work, then you do it because no one's going to hold this next to the famous picture, you know, and compare. So now that I've adjusted this, this brim looks like it keeps going right behind instead of going up and then not looking like it connects. Okay, so my hair is still looking all right. Didn't smudge too bad. And then the next part is going to be our background. So in his original painting, the background was like an orangey, yellowy brown. And here, I also use the orangey, yellowy brown. But, you know, I want to be different. So let's see, what can I do? I think I'm going to go... Ooh, what color should I go with? Um, I think I'll go with a light blue. So I'm gonna take this blue and I'm gonna start coloring in my background. I had, luckily I had a broken piece, but you could always, you know, break one of your pastels in half if you wanna use it sideways. 
Okay, so I'm getting this light blue background. Okay, and then here. I'm pushing everything all the way up to the tape edge. There you go, so I've got this side to do next. That looks great, Lily. What color do you think you'll use for the brim edge? Uh, I'll think about it. Okay. Oh, I know one thing we haven't done yet. We haven't done the lips. So if you want to color in the lips, figure out a color that you like. I'm gonna pick like a brownish red. It's a very lipstick color of color. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go right on top of my pencil lines, or I mean my, my original guideline with the orangey brown chalk. I'm gonna fill my lips in. I don't want my lips to get really big because they're tiny. So we've got that. Then if I wanna give them any kind of a dark space between the two lips, I can take the black or dark brown and just really slightly, ever so slightly, like that. Oh, I just smudged it. So what I'm gonna do is, I just had a big smudge. I'm gonna look at my fingers, either wipe them on my apron or on a oh, paper towel, yeah, yeah or that, or take my cleanest finger is my pinky finger because I haven't blended with that. Let's see if I can clean it up. I can get that orange again and add that orange back that I just kind of rubbed off. And then I can take this and do the corner of my lip, which is what I was trying to do before. Like that. Now it looks a little something like that. Oh, I like that background color because it's kind of fluorescent looking. It's got a pop. Okay, so next we're going to shade different areas in the background. So on Modigliani's, you can see where certain areas near the shoulder, off to the side. See, look right here. See how it looks like it's black around here? So we're gonna add some little black accents to the back. So find your black chalk, and then we're gonna start here in the corner. Go near the edge, don't do it too dark. And then you're gonna rub it in till it makes it look kind of fadey like that. Yeah, keep it close to the edge. Then you're gonna go over to the other top area in this corner, do a little of that. Just like make a little black line just below the tape in here. You can rub it in circles if you don't want to do it with the stripes. Yeah, that looks cool. Okay, and We've got this area done, this area done, and down in here around these edges, go ahead and give it a little bit of black here and here, and just blend that in a little. Ooh, if it gets too dark, switch fingers or add some more of your lighter color. Okay, and then we're gonna do something to this corner, right above where that, what I think is the sofa is, go ahead and blend that in. Ooh, let's see. Now on the outside edge of the hat, we're gonna make a really skinny black line like this. Oh, it's like the outline. It's like an outline, but we're keeping it skinny. If it goes, you know, wide, it's not gonna have the same effect. And you can do that over here too. Super light, you're just barely dragging lightly this pastel around. Nice, and you can go all the way through here. I went all the way through there. There you go. And hmm, let me see where else. You can put a little bit of dark over to the side. And if you want a little dark here, you can do that too, but I keep it super light. 
this room. Now I'm gonna go and look around and see if some of my original guidelines of my composition are still showing. Like, I still have some showing over here where the hair is, so I'm gonna cover it up like that. I still have, see that orange guideline? I still have it showing, I'm gonna get rid of that. So I think it's done. Oh, oh wait, no, yeah, see the shoulder? Yeah, I, I, I still have that showing it. too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna blend it in with my finger, or mine was, Mine was orange, but I used orange as my shading, but my yellow side, I'm gonna get rid of that guideline that was at the top of my shirt. Oh my gosh, I haven't even come up with the color of a shirt. We need a color for a shirt so they aren't all wearing black. So now you're gonna pick your last of the favorite colors, and mine's gonna be purple. Just like this, I love that purple. So I'm gonna give her a purple shirt, and I'm going over that original guideline. Just like that. Then I'm going over here to this side. Going over my original guidelines. I don't want that orange to show up so much. Oh! And then I'm gonna blend that in. Wow. Let me take a look at mine. I'm looking at it upside down the whole time. Oh, it's looking like the woman with the hat. Okay, hmm, anything else I could do? I noticed on the side where her hair is shorter, on the side of her neck, it's darker. So I'm gonna take that black pastel again and over here on this side, I'm gonna shade it more on this side, over here. Just like that and give it a little blend. Gosh, I think I'm about there. Fix that up. I kind of overdid it. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna get orange where I kind of put too much chalk outside of there. I'm gonna go like this. Pack it out. Gosh, I think I'm feeling it. Let's see. I'm gonna add a little bit of black on, on this side of the hat. Sometimes it's like, I think I'm done and then I see something else I'd want to do to it. So you can have that, you know, that same thing where you, you look at it and you go, I think it's done, but then you go, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe if I just adjust it a little, it'll look even that much better. So add a little tweak here and there. Ooh, hers is so pretty, I like her light hair. So go ahead and clean up that edge where the red ended up getting in here. If you've got some other colors that got into your light areas, go ahead and adjust those. Perfect. I think we're looking good. Yep, I'm done. I'm done too. So the, what we're doing now, now, let me show you what to do. What's the best thing to do? Is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna push all this chalk dust up so I don't get it all over. Let me push the chalk dust up. Since I have a board, yeah, okay. But don't brush it out into space because then it might land on stuff you don't want it to. So now I'm gonna take my fingertips that are really dirty and I'm gonna, I have an apron on. I'm wiping them on my apron. You might wipe them on something else because now we're going to um, take the tape off. And when we take the tape off, you can keep your hands inside the drawing when you do it. Because you do not want your hands on the black edge because it'll leave fingerprints. So I've got one piece of tape off and then I turn this and I go and peel another. You're good though. So if I put my, look at how I'm putting my hands inside my picture without trying to leave fingerprints too bad. Okay. Getting ready for a big reveal. All righty, we're waiting. Lily's got one more side to go. But while I'm thinking that, I, I think this seemed like it was gonna be really hard at the beginning, but it wasn't as hard as it might've looked. Now for the reveal, you ready? Ta-da! <laughs> Now, this is how ours turned out. We'd love to see how yours turned out. So what should we do, Lily? Oh, you should post a photo on Instagram and tag it with Art Classes for Kids or email us at kim at artclassesforkids.com and hopefully we'll see your photo. Now, if you would like to see what tomorrow's project is, 
Hang on for one second and I will be right back with it. Tomorrow's project looks a little like this and it is a mixed media collage. This uh, project is a tree with actual real leaves on it. You'll be doing painting, drawing, and collaging. So if you want to know what you're going to need for this and you're going to be able to join us tomorrow, can you hold this up Lily while you tell them? Okay, it's inspired by the artist Fred Tomaselli. Here's an uh, image of one of his big paintings. That was our inspiration. What you'll need tomorrow are colored pencils, oh, a black foam board or black paper. You're going to need some paints. You don't need this many, but you need at least three colors. You need a skinny, a, a skinny brush and a fine point paintbrush. You need a glue stick. And lastly, oh, and you need the blue tape again. And then you'll also need leaves. So I have a little plate of leaves, you they, see. They can either be dry leaves or fresh leaves. Yes, either way. And they, they, and, uh, we would prefer small leaves. Oh yeah, because yeah. you wouldn't put a lot of them to have the impact. But if you have like a so bit, or if you're doing a, a big collage, that something this small, you can choose bigger leaves. So we hope you'll be joining us tomorrow to make this mixed media collage with us. And if you are, woo, one of them okay. came unglued. Well, hold on, let go. And let me, let's go back to our other pictures. Oh. <laughs> so we hope you enjoyed making The Lady in a Hat inspired by Amadeo Modigliani. And that it was fun and that you enjoyed it enough to come join us again and keep watching our videos. What do they need to do? Uh, like. Like, subscribe, and click the notifications button for more for more uh, awesome 